Hey guys, hi, how are you? Today I bring you the 2023 Nissan Rogue. In this video, I'll go over some of the features, the different packages that it offers, and then we'll take it for a drive and I'll give you, like always, my honest impressions. But first, let me give you a quick intro into the Nissan Rogue. This vehicle is now in its third generation. It came to the United States in 2007 as a 2008 year model. It is Nissan's top selling vehicle in this country. And at some point, it was the top selling crossover here. That crown now belongs to the RAV4. But Nissan as a whole has been dealing with a lot of reliability issues for the past two decades, especially since the merge with Renault. At some point, Toyota and Nissan were pretty much similar in the perception of reliability and durability, but that's not the case anymore. <laughs> Nissan offers the Rogue in five versions called the S, the SV, the Midnight Edition, the SL, and the Platinum. This is the base model S trim with all-wheel drive. Please note that the Nissan Rogue and the Toyota RAV4 are very similar in pricing, dimensions, and amenities. So to keep this video moving, I just want to say that the main differences between the two is that the Rogue top trim level, the Platinum, offers features not found on the RAV4 like leather seating. Also, the Rogue Platinum compares with the RAV4 Limited, but the Rogue Platinum offers all the driving assist technologies, a 360 camera, heated seats, and a panoramic sunroof is standard. Well, on the RAV4 Limited, you need to pay an extra $2,500 for these features. So in theory, the Nissan Rogue has the pricing advantage, but only in the higher trim levels. Another thing to keep in mind is that the Nissan Rogue doesn't come as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid, like in the case of the RAV4. Let's talk about this engine. The Nissan Rogue only comes with one engine option. It's a 1.53 cylinder turbo engine that peaks at 201 horsepower and 225 pound-feet of torque and is mated to a CVT transmission. It's rated at 28 in the city and 34 on the highway. 0 to 60 in about 8 seconds, which is about a second faster than the RAV4. But remember, the RAV4 comes with a traditional 8-speed automatic, so the experience is going to be a little bit different than that of the Rogue's CVT. Let me give you a quick intro to the exterior of the Nissan Rogue because it's one of my favorite aspects of this vehicle. It's very boxy, very masculine, reminds me of the old X-Trail that I used to see in the streets of Mexico. Starting with this front end that has a very strong presence with this corporate grill, with this U-shaped chrome piece right here, and then the split LED headlights. These are LED headlights, these are your daytime running lights and incandescent turn signals. And then on the sides you have these functional vents and no fog lights. You can get fog lights in other trim levels or as a standalone option. And then at the very bottom, you have this very interesting piece that gives the Rogue a very interesting utilitarian look, but in reality, it's just cheap rubberized plastic. Looking at this vehicle from the side, I really like the dimensions and the boxy look of the Rogue. It's about 183 inches long, slightly longer than the RAV4. And I really like what they did with the cladding on both the rear end and the front because it visually scoops up the overhangs to give the Rogue the impression of being a taller vehicle, when in reality it's only 8.2 inches off the ground, which is slightly less than the RAV4. These tires are 235s by 65s, 17 inch wheels. I've been driving it throughout the day and it's a very comfortable ride. So I'm guessing that once you start upgrading to the 18 and 19 inch wheels, yes, the vehicle may look a little bit nicer, maybe more aggressive, but you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of ride quality. Let me know if you have this vehicle, let me know if you have the 18 and 19 inch wheels and how it drives. Something else I wanted to mention about the exterior of this vehicle is how the chrome was kept to a minimum, which is maybe the grill and then this piece right here and the badging. But if you want less chrome than this, you can opt for the Midnight Edition that basically blacks out everything to include the wheels, which is gonna give you glossy black wheels. Another thing that I really like about this Nissan Rogue over the RAV4 is that it doesn't have that floating roof design that I think is kind of silly played out. So it just opts for this old school boxy SUV design. Moving on to the rear end of the Rogue, not much to say. I do like how they spelled out Rogue right here, similar to what they do with the Pathfinder. And then you have these horizontal taillights that are a combination of LED and incandescent. And then you have this canopy style spoiler that houses the third brake light right here. Then when you move at the bottom right here, you have this texturized rubber bumper and then this lighter gray that is not my favorite, it looks kind of cheap. And then you don't have any visible exhaust pipes. Interesting. Moving on to the interior. 
starting with the sitting position, I think it's very good high, like you would expect from a crossover. And the Nissan Rogue offers really good visibility. Legroom is very similar number-wise to the RAV4, and sometimes it seems like car manufacturers mimic what the other one does and end up offering nearly identical specs to the competition. I'd like to give a special mention to this key fob because it was finally upgraded. When this third generation first came out, it still had the old key fob that I, I had on my 2011 Nissan Juke. So it was very old. So I'm glad that for this year, it was upgraded to this nicer key fob. And then to start it, it's just a typical start button that is down here. And then as you can see, the instrument panel is a combination of analog and digital at the center. The material selection, the Nissan Rogue is very good. starting with this injected molding that happens to be brown, not black. I don't know if you can see it too well in the video, but then here you have this soft vinyl and then real stitching. When you come to the doors, you have different materials. This is injected molding, then this is some nice fabric, and then you have soft vinyl right here and hard plastics at the bottom. The windows are single touch, but only for the driver and the rest are manuals. I wonder if on higher trim levels, all the windows become automatic. And of course you have power mirrors and your control is right here. And then here, this you have this flat bottom steering wheel that in higher trim levels, you can wrap it in leather. The center screen is an 8-inch touchscreen that in the SL grows an extra inch. And because this is the S trim, which I mentioned earlier, the AC is a single zone, but in other trim levels, it can be had in dual and even tri-zone climate controls. Let's move on to the rear seat, but first let me show you how wide these doors open to a 90-degree angle, which is very convenient for people with families. And then the leg room is very adequate here, as well as the headroom, very generous. When it comes to the door panels, it chippens out a little bit because this becomes hard plastic. This is the same fabric and then you have this nice vinyl where your elbow touches and hard plastic at the bottom. Let's move on to the rear cargo area. Remember, this is manual, but it can be had with a power lift gate. The cargo capacity of the Nissan Rogue is 31.6 cubic feet, less than what the RAV4 offers at 37.6 cubic feet. But please don't take my word for it because manufacturers have their own way of measuring their cargo areas. I think that the cargo room of the Rogue is great and remember that you can lower the rear seats if you need the extra cargo room. Let's go drive this thing, I'm getting tired of talking. Despite the fact that this is a three cylinder, it doesn't have a lot of vibration compared to a four cylinder. If you notice, when I was talking about the engine, I showed you some footage of the three cylinder when it was running and notice how the engine cover was vibrating. I wasn't expecting this vehicle to be as quiet as it is. I wanted to give this car a fair chance and I was not really expecting this level of quietness, relative quietness in this vehicle. So that is a plus for this car. Now, talking about the CVT transmission, the latest one I drove was the one on the Honda Civic and that one was not as responsive as this one this one is way better no it doesn't drive like a normal traditional automatic transmission but it's very good i remember some of the older cvts they had like this rubber band effect so when you press on the go pedal on the gas pedal it will first drone and then catch up on speed and rpms but now this is a lot more responsive. Another thing is I was going over the driving dynamics of the car in the morning and I realized that this 4x4 is a must have in a vehicle like this because front wheel drive vehicles tend to shift the weight to the back under hard acceleration. And this one has, it's called intelligent all wheel drive, but it's, it's a full time all wheel drive that kicks in when needed. So you have a little monitor here in the instrument panel that shows you how much torque goes to the rear wheels and under hard acceleration i noticed that it would go like 20 percent it's not great but it's enough to prevent this vehicle from unnecessary wheel spin so when you hear that this vehicle is not available on a hybrid i don't mind it because the miles per gallon are pretty good now keep in mind that these smaller engines with turbos tend to be a little thirsty once you start stepping on the gas pedal. When you drive it normally, you might be able to reach those claim MPGs, but as soon as, start, as, as soon as you start driving aggressively, it's gonna drop more than a normally aspirated engine. The third generation Nissan Rogue started with a normally aspirated engine, which was a 2.5, and that was an older engine that was proven. 
Now with this 1.3, I'm not sure it's gonna hold up well because my last experience with the new engine was the, in 2011, I had a Nissan Juke that I believe it had a 1.6 turbo engine and that engine had to be replaced at 30,000 miles. And then I started getting these uh, recall notices for different issues with that engine and class action lawsuits for excessive oil consumption and then timing uh, chain failure, all kinds of things for that car. So. It was kind of disappointing because I did like the car when I had it, it was fun to drive, but that engine wasn't reliable at all. And this is the case of this smaller 1.3 engine that is a first timer for Nissan, at least in the United States. So I don't know how it's gonna hold up in time. I wouldn't bet on this car long-term, but it drives pretty nice. I have no complaints. Let's put it in manual mode here. How is it here? It's saying, for example, right now we're doing that downshift or fourth gear and then picks up really well and right now we're going 75-80 and it mimics an eight speed here and at 75 miles per hour is doing less than 2000 rpm how is that possible i have no idea the road noise is kept to a minimum not a lot of wind noise i do hear a little bit over here at the corners of the windows but for the most part, this is a quiet vehicle considering what it is. And the visibility is great. I would get it with all wheel drive. And if it was up to me, I would get it with the SV package, which gives you certain options that reasonably equip this car to have a better experience with it. Now, if you have the pockets, then you can opt for the SL and then the top of the line Platinum. I think it's a great deal compared to the limited um, RAV4. The only two Nissan cars that I had were not that great. Um, as I said, one of them was the Nissan Juke. Had to replace the engine at 30,000 miles, all kinds of problems. And uh, the other one was an older Nissan, 2001 Nissan Maxima. And that one was okay, but it also had a lot of problems. Then again, it had a lot of miles. So after those two bad experiences, I promised myself that I would never buy a Nissan product. But this is, I mean, for what it is, this is a good new car. I just wanted to drive this car to get a feel for it because some of you asked me in the, in the Lexus video, asked me what non-premium SUV would I drive? And this being a highly popular one, uh, gave me that opportunity to test drive it. I haven't, I haven't test driven the RAV4, but that's on the list. This has been my presentation of the 2023 Nissan Rogue. I think it has come a long way to what it is today in its third generation. And depending on how you option it, it can be a bargain compared to the RAV4. But expect this one to depreciate a little bit faster than the Toyota. If I were in the market for a compact SUV, I'd probably still pick the RAV4 versus this one, mainly because of this three-cylinder engine. I do not know how a turbo three-cylinder engine is gonna hold up in time, especially made it to that CVT transmission. And we know that CVT transmissions tend not to hold up too well when the miles pile up. I do like the way it drives. I even prefer the exterior looks of it in the interior layout over the RAV4. I just don't trust the long-term reliability of this vehicle. But please let me know in the comments, do you have one of these? How many miles do you have on it? Has it turned out to be a good vehicle, a bad experience? I wanna hear from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.